Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Coming together as God's family with confidence that has asked the Father's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd who is leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people who have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed and by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through with the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. I was thrust, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my saviour. There are shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead, so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoiled or soiled and never fade away, because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which has been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold, only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible, even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have the praise and glory and honour from God. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still without seeing him, you are already filled with joy so glorious that it cannot be described. Because you believe and you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward, that is, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And for those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I can see the holes that the nails made in his hands and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, Put your finger here, look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, 
You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During excavations in Egypt during the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat roughly 5,000 years old in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. Someone, however, decided to sow these grains and believe it or not, to their amazement, they came to life even after 5,000 years. Isn't that amazing? Our faith in the resurrection, I believe, will be like those dormant grains unless we believe that Jesus is present with us as a real living person. Even though we don't see him in the flesh, he touches my life in the here and now with his reassuring presence, especially in the Mass and in the sacraments. When Jesus said before he ascended into heaven that he would be with us always until the end of time, he was primarily thinking of the Mass. There's an old French proverb which says, God often visits us, but mostly we're not at home. A bit like doubting Thomas. We're not at home if our faith is merely academic, all head, no heart. Also, we're not at home if we believe that science has the answer to everything. Thomas needed observable signs before he believed anything. That doesn't at all mean that the Church and Christians generally are anti-science, as some people make out. The first observatory in the world, for instance, was in the Vatican. The first universities in Europe, in the world for that matter, founded of course by the Catholic Church, included faculties on natural philosophy and physics. Now, if the Church was anti-science, as some academics make out, those faculties would not have been included. It's as simple as that. I know that the Church censored Galileo, but it wasn't because the Church discounted his theory that the Earth circled the Sun, as some make out, but because they wanted him, Galileo that is, to treat it as a hypothesis rather than the irrefutable truth. But being young and brash as he was, he wouldn't listen to anybody. That was the nub of the problem. We could say there was a sort of breakdown in communication. The Protestant Church at the time actually discounted his theory as anti-scripture. That's what happens when the Bible is interpreted too literally. For instance, when the Bible says that Samson killed 10,000 men with the jawbone of a nass, then he did. No ifs and buts. Quite bizarre. Thomas would not believe that Jesus had risen until he had seen him in the flesh. But Jesus gently tells him, Blessed are those 
who have not seen and yet believe, and that certainly includes us. I believe that the resurrection has more to do with the transformation of the inner man or woman than actually seeing Jesus in the flesh. It is interesting to note that on the four or five occasions when Jesus appeared to the disciples after the resurrection, facial recognition was not very high on his agenda. Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. The apostles thought he was a ghost. And when he joined the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they thought he was a total stranger. If Jesus in the flesh, let's say, were to walk into this church right now, would there be any guarantee, after the dust had settled, that any of us would go out and live better Christian lives? I doubt it very much. The words of Jesus recorded in Scripture are far more important than glimpsing him in the flesh. In John's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus says, The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. And in the same Gospel, Jesus is described as the Word made flesh. When then, through the power of the Spirit, his words become fleshed out, as it were, in us, that we are actually living his words, then the power of Christ's resurrection will indeed shine through us. We will, as St. Augustine said all those centuries ago, we will be Easter people, not just in name, but also in fact. The doctrine of the resurrection is the firm bedrock which our faith is built. Tamper with that and we shake its very foundations. St. Paul reminds us of this when he says, if Christ is not risen, then all our believing is in vain. So then, the church wasn't built on doubting Thomas's, but on the unshakable belief that Jesus rose from the dead in his human body and is sacramentally with us in the church until the end of time, like he said he would. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead.
dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with joy to Christ our Lord. He rose from the dead and is now living to intercede for us. Let us pray for the Church. As a Church, may we not hide the light of our faith in the resurrection of Christ from people who need it the most. Lord, in your mercy. The first words of Jesus to his disciples after his resurrection were, Peace be with you. May we be healed from anything in our lives, whether past or present, which tends to rob us of this same peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers and the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you a life on the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Ralph our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the Resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Easter feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia.